Welcome to Red Recaps. Today we're going to take a look at the famous slasher movie Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Trust me when I say that this movie is going to be interesting. Ensure you watch until the end. Now let's dive in. The film starts with a documentary on Leatherface, a terrifying killer who preys on five teenagers in Texas during the summer of 1973 while wearing a human face mask. Using a chainsaw, among other instruments, a woman by the name of Leatherface brutally murders the four young individuals. As the only survivor of Leatherface's murderous rampage, a woman by the name of Sally ends up reporting the horrific atrocity carried out by Leatherface to the authorities. The incident is known as the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, one of the most notorious unsolved murder cases. In the present, Lila, a teenager from Texas, is purchasing munchies and a chainsaw bottle opener at a small shop. Melody, her sister, is waiting outside in their upscale vehicle. An article about Sally is seen by Lila in the newspaper. The store owner responds by saying that Sally becomes a ranger and dedicates the rest of her life to tracking down Leatherface so she may get revenge on him. Because Sally still doesn't know what Leatherface looks like, she hasn't been able to locate him until now. They're about to leave when Melody enters to fetch Lila. They go to an almost abandoned town in Texas with their friend, a well-known YouTuber and his girlfriend, Melody. The three reportedly team up to buy the abandoned town and develop it so people will want to leave the chaotic city and can have a peaceful life in their soon-to-be-developed town along the way. When Lila checks her social media, she notices that the anti-gun violence movements have taken over her page. She survived a recent school shooting, and the trauma she experienced there is still evident in her life. In the meantime, Uber's vlog about the community goes viral, since so many people want to relocate there. The sheriff and his officers stop them as they approach the town line to check. The news of their plans for the town is widely known in the area, so the sheriff immediately identifies them as the developers. The sheriff invites them in and reminds them to respect the community. When asked about respecting the town before they enter, Melody responds that her grandmother left the area not long after they arrived at the abandoned town. Leela refuses to move there with Melody because it is too far from their former home, despite Melody's attempts to persuade her to do so as they discuss their ideas for the town to help Leela get over the pain. The Texas resident exits his garage. Since they plan to sell the structures to possible investors, Udbert reportedly gives the Texas man the order to improve the building's appearance. To take down the flag, they enter the building housing the orphanage. They were surprised to see that the building still housed an ailing grandmother. Then they tell the grandmother that the bank has already taken possession of the building. Since the bank issue has already been resolved, the grandma, who turns out to be the orphanage caregiver, claims that it is her property. The granny won't accept the YouTuber's claims, so he gets the sheriff to remove her. She protests that it is her property, and the sheriff soon arrives to take her away. As her condition worsens, she starts having breathing problems. She only remains orphaned when a worried, enormous man descends to assist the sheriff in getting her to the hospital. Although Melody would have liked to ride with them to the hospital, the investors arrive by bus, so she must greet them instead. Grandma is brought to the hospital by the YouTuber's girlfriend, who decides to accompany them. Along the journey, the grandmother passes away unexpectedly as she urges her grandson to always be a nice boy. The big man attempts unsuccessfully to revive her. The enormous man becomes enraged at her unexpected death, breaks the deputy's thin arm, and then repeatedly stabs himself in the throat with the broken deputy's bone. The deputy fires his gun in an attempt to defend himself, but instead mistakenly kills the driving sheriff, who up until that time had been oblivious of the disturbance. Ultimately, the deputy dies from bleeding to death, and the vehicle crashes. He collapses, leaving the girlfriend in the town with no consciousness. Lila attempts to use the Texas man's gun while they are conversing amicably, which brings to mind the traumatic school shooting incident she went through. The girlfriend texts Melody to tell her that her grandmother has passed away. She then feels terrible, believing that they are to blame for her heart attack. She decides to leave the community with her sister. The Texas man takes their vehicle key after discovering that the granny passed away and forbids them from leaving until they can demonstrate that they are indeed in the orphanage building. The YouTuber then tries to seek the building's deed of sale in the file case, but is unable to do so, leading them to wonder if they had previously purchased it. The big man is busily removing the grandmother's face in the middle of the field and wearing it. The huge man is eventually identified as Leatherface. The girlfriend calls for assistance on the radio, but only the business owner receives the signal. When Leatherface gets close to the automobile, he makes the girlfriend pretend to be dead. 
Soon after learning that she is still alive, he slowly slices her stomach while choking her till she passes out. Leatherface slowly marches to the town after his murderous rampage to exact revenge on the investors who ruined their quiet lives. Ranger Sally is informed that Leatherface has returned by the store owner after hearing the girlfriend's report. Then Sally gets ready to seek out Leatherface to exact her revenge on the community. Melody and the YouTuber look through Grandma's possessions for the building's title, so they can claim it as their own, and identify whether Grandma owns it. Melody goes upstairs and quickly discovers the title, demonstrating Grandma is the owner of the structure below. When Leatherface shows up, he instantly slashes the YouTuber in the face, causing him to bleed out and collapse on the ground. Mel ran to the room's cabinet as soon as she spotted the YouTuber bleeding on the ground. When Leatherface witnesses the investors having a good time outside while grieving Grandma's passing, he storms out of the room in wrath. She then exits the cabinet and goes to the window to ask for assistance, but the investors don't notice her. She drew back as she sensed the Leatherface slowly entering the room, causing her to once more conceal herself. The wall is destroyed by Leatherface with the hammer, exposing the secret chainsaw that he intends to use to execute the naive investors. The bleeding YouTuber awakens and goes outside in the rain to get assistance. He is noticed by the Texas man and his friend, who are shocked to see his disfigured visage. The Texas man suddenly passes away while he is asking who cut his face. The YouTuber's friend returns to their bus and shuts the door inside the structure, as the Texas man gets his rifle ready. Leatherface anticipates the Texas man's arrival and positions himself to ambush him. As he strolls, he is confronted by Leatherface inside the room, who tries to hit him. He stands his ground and engages Leatherface in combat. Sadly, Leatherface manages to hammer his leg, injuring him. He musters up the courage to fight back, but Leatherface manages to force him into the shard of glass. He then slowly bleeds to death before falling to the ground. When Leatherface sees that he is still moving, he continually hits his head against objects until it is utterly deformed. Meanwhile, Sally arrives at the scene of the vehicular homicide and discovers dead bodies and Grandma's unsettling Leatherface memorial. After that, she goes to the town to look for Leatherface. Back at the building, Melody takes the key and leaves the room covertly, assuming Leatherface has left. As she makes her way downstairs, Leatherface notices her out of the blue and swings the hammer at her, sending her flying under the first floor. She then desperately crawls to evade Leatherface's chainsaw as he pursues her. Fortunately, Lila shows up and unlocks the vent, letting her leave the building. They then sprint back to the bus where the blissfully merry investors are waiting. When their friend sees Leatherface approaching, she warns the driver to leave. Sadly, Leatherface manages to slit their tire, causing the bus to come to a complete halt. When the driver steps outside to check, Leatherface instantly lops off his head. After that, Leatherface enters the gathering undetected, but the investors start broadcasting live footage of him in the hopes that it'll stop Leatherface from committing a crime. One of the investors warns Leatherface that if he attempts to commit a crime, his investment will be canceled. With the chainsaw, Leatherface continues to chop the investors' bodies one by one. While this is happening, fans of the live stream believe the massacre to be a hoax and want to board the bus since it seems like fun. Despite their best efforts, investors are entirely confined inside the bus as Leatherface swings his chainsaw at them. The remaining investors watch in horror as bodies are being severed and blood is sprayed all over the place. Although the final investor succeeds in opening the window, she is nevertheless severed in half because Leatherface has already killed everyone. The two sisters are then discovered by him hiding in the bathroom. Fortunately, they were able to exit through the ceiling window. As they and Melody begin to flee from the bus, they notice Sally in the car, who has just arrived in the town. They then enter, giving them a sense of security. Instead of running away, Sally wants to exact revenge on Leatherface. She then drives off, locking the two sisters in the vehicle and goes inside to confront Leatherface. Once she locates Leatherface, she confronts him with the shotgun and asks whether he remembers her, but he ignores her and casually departs to find the sisters. Thankfully, Sally shows up and fires at him, hitting him in the shoulder. If he flees, Sally gives the sisters the car key so that they may go while she searches for Leatherface. Out of nowhere, Leatherface suddenly appears and approaches her while brandishing a chainsaw. Although she evades his assault, he manages to grip her gun. She responds by stabbing him in the stomach, and Leatherface then attacks her with the chainsaw. As Leatherface comes, the car smashes, but sadly, Melody is impaled, keeping her inside, so she orders Lila to leave her alone. Lila departs, leaving Mel all by herself. 
Then Leatherface approaches the vehicle and starts the chainsaw. Lila returns out of nowhere with the Texas man's gun and tries to shoot Leatherface, but she has no idea how to handle it. Then Leatherface pursues her, catching up with her in the middle of the road. Fortunately, the dying Sally, with her last remaining power, loads a shot into her shotgun and fires at Leatherface, forcing him to flee inside the abandoned theater. Lila is warned by Sally not to flee, since Leatherface's terror will follow her forever as she loads the shotgun with another round. After that, just before she passes away, Sally gives Lila the shotgun. To find Leatherface within the theater, Lila confronts her fear and grabs the shotgun. Leatherface surprises her as she enters and pushes her into the pool to drown her. Fortunately, after a short while, she can flee. Leatherface tugs at her back as she exits the swimming pool. She tries to grab the shotgun, but is unsuccessful as Leatherface grabs his chainsaw. Lila succeeds in obtaining the shotgun and engages Leatherface with multiple shots. Strangely, despite the bullets, Leatherface doesn't seem to be affected by them, presumably due to his thick, bulletproof skin. He falls into the pool after Melody swings the chainsaw at him in the face. Finally, they feel relieved as they watch Leatherface and notice that he appears to be drowning in the pool. They then joyfully get into their luxury vehicle, believing they have finally escaped the massacre. The vehicle then starts to pull away when they switch on the self-driving mode, but it turns out that Leatherface survives the pool drowning. He suddenly materializes from nowhere, grabbing Melody from the vehicle, leaving Lila alone in the self-driving vehicle. Then Lila sees a graphic scene in which Leatherface slashes Melody's head. Following that, Leatherface dances in victory and hurls the chainsaw at Lila, possibly hitting her in the head. After a long day of killing, Leatherface eventually retires to his family's home in the middle of a green field. Oh my gosh, what a slasher movie indeed. Enjoyed this video? Leave a comment down below and let us know what you think about the movie. If you liked this movie, you can watch it by clicking on the links below. And also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more of our videos. Thanks for watching Red Recaps. See you in the next video.